are selfish. You are greedy. You will regret this foolish decision. Your man will leave you one day and get a child with someone else. Those are the words I heard repeated to me countless times from those around me. To understand how I got there, let us go to the beginning. My name is Wanja Kimani, third born in a family of three girls. I am married to a wonderful man from Nyeri. We grew up on a farm in the outskirts of Nairobi. We had a normal upbringing, and my parents treated us like the greatest children in the world. My sisters have two children each. I'm a super auntie to two nieces and two nephews from my end of the family. I have in-laws with children and grandchildren. I love them all deeply. There is a notion that women are somehow incomplete, unsuccessful, or unhappy if they are not married and with children. We don't need to be married or mothers to be complete. We get to determine our own happily ever after for ourselves. We as women do a lot of incredible things in this world other than just procreate. There's a notion that women must be a certain age, by a certain age, they must start a family. And if they don't, they somehow owe the world an explanation. I have never wanted to have children. This was not an option for me. Motherhood never appeals to me. So I chose to go with my gut. Don't get this wrong. I go through all the biological phases dropped on us by science. But for my body, I choose not to have children. I was brought up knowing that we must make our choices in life and defend them to the last. For example, my first car was an old Beetle, a very poor choice for a first car. This car would not start in the morning as I headed out to work, and I had to engage members of the house to come and push it to start. They must have thought I was a pest. The headlights let me down as I drove home from work. My mother thought this car was way too loud in our rather quiet neighborhood as I drove home late at night. ETC, ETC. My father eventually escorted me to return this old car to the cellar. But this was after a complete lecture about choices and the consequences of them. My husband, over 20 years ago, we met friends during a casual evening out. When we met, we chatted about lots of things. But I believe the reason he asked me out for coffee shortly after this meeting is because I loosely remarked that children were not on my list of things to do. <laughs> he secretly shared the exact same thoughts. I believe he's one of many men who feel the exact same way. Heck, just look at the number of deadbeat dads out there. But let's stick to my story for now. Do I ever regret this decision? No. However, I once entertained some doubtful thoughts about my decision. This was after I encountered dear ones, make effort, and spent top dollars to try and conceive a baby. I since realized that my feelings were of sympathy and not of a need to have a child of my own. The world demands that I justify this bold choice that I have made for myself. Aunties, girlfriends, well-wishers, 
invited me to countless tea parties to try and, I don't know, change my mind. I often reply to them with this question. What if you felt you had a choice? Would you have chosen not to have children? Many constantly fumbled over their answers. They felt that it was, you know, the, their duty to name parents, or to respond to the biblical call that a man and a woman must unite and fill the earth. But what I understood from them is that they never ever thought that this option of being child free ever existed in their lives. This preconceived duty is ingrained in their minds. I often wonder why the world around me, especially relatives, feel that they own my body. I would come home and find people in a surprise visit, praying for my health <laughs> and fertility so that demons would leave my home and curses would be lifted and a child would be received. I have countless business cards of renowned gynecologists passed to me with a wink for my problem. I have witnessed prayers for Christmas lunches and dinners digress from the yummy roast and wine on the table to praying for her fertility. I have been on the answering table instead of some aimless cousins and friends having to explain this bold choice. Some church members became nagging pests when they wondered when their interpretation of the will of God in a marriage would be fulfilled in my home. I tried to understand the biblical angle. The Bible is a little quiet on women issues. Some people, like the Catholic nuns, choose to serve the church and abandon thoughts of marriage and children. They have made their choice just like me. Our Kenyan community is particularly rude and nosy about handling people like us who choose to be child. They label you with unprintable names. Some women feel more entitled or deserve better by virtue of being mothers. They ask about carrying on the family name and building legacies. But what are the real legacies that we leave in the world that we live in? What is the true value of a man? slash woman. How do you measure the worth of a man? Is it in wealth? Or strength? Or size? How much he gained? Or how much he gave? Is it in how many children he had? Or how many things he built? Here are some real truths about women and our bodies. Some women suffer postnatal depression. Some women make for horrible mothers. They lack that natural maternal instinct. Some women regret having the child or children they have. No one teaches you to love a child you never want. Some women hate their children. 
Some women get abandoned by men after siring children and live with a scar or bitterness. Where are the judge and jury of child-free people when they see these like these? Do they have loud opinions here? Mind you, there are some great perks about being child-free. <laughs> I do love other people's children. I make a great auntie and attend baby showers and baby parties. I look after children left in my care for short periods of time. <laughs> I enjoy sharing the milestones of my nieces and nephews. I care deeply for what my friends who are mothers are going through and share in their happiness and their struggles. I am a normal, red-blooded female. My choice is just slightly varied from theirs. My body, my choice. I raise my glass to successful ladies who are child-free and have not let this interfere with their roles. Angela Merkel. Condoleezza Rice, Theresa May, Ashley Judd, Jennifer Aniston, Oprah Winfrey, Dolly Parton. Cheers. <laughs>